Companies that receive the USBLN Leadership Award in the employer category are recognized for exemplary policies, strategies, and initiatives that have resulted in measurable results in the areas of disability inclusiveness in the workplace, marketplace, and supply chain. And so I'm pleased to announce this year's Employer of the Year is Starbucks Coffee Company. Starbucks values individuals with disabilities as assets in the workplace. Please join me in welcoming Jessica Rayfuse, Starbucks Manager for EEO Initiatives, Law and Corporate Affairs, who will accept the award on behalf of Starbucks. Welcome, Jessica. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for this tremendous honor. On behalf of our 200,000 partners, our employees, all across the globe, including those who are here with me today from our local area, thank you for this honor. Especially since I've spent the whole week with you, I have learned so much personally, and I cannot wait to get back and implement my to-do list, which keeps getting longer and longer. So thank you for that. At Starbucks, we we're committed to our people and our partners and our business. It's within our mission. Our mission is to inspire and nurture the human spirit, one person, one cup, one neighborhood at a time. One person first. And that's very important because when we think about Starbucks internally, we think about it as a place where we're not a coffee company that serves people, we're a people company that serves coffee. And that was so important for me looking for work when I wanted to make a decision to move to a different job. I really wanted a company that kind of got it, that understood it. And so I knew Starbucks was the right place for that. So some of the ways in which we are doing that is really looking at this as an opportunity this year that we've been talking a lot about 7%. And 7% really engages the conversation. It opens up the door. But more than that, we're looking at a cultural change. And this is so exciting for me personally because um, like was mentioned earlier, Chris had said about journey and where I am in my journey. And this is my very first USBLN conference. And so looking at this from a new angle has been richly rewarding for me. And knowing that our leaders are open to that is a really great experience. So we're looking at our partners and we're looking at the, the importance of the assets, the benefits, the gifts and rewards that we receive because we have a disability. So if you will indulge me on a coffee analogy, I know some of you heard this earlier, but this is what we call the Peaberry Premium. We love coffee a lot. <laughs> and a Peaberry is a type of coffee. It is um, actually an agricultural defect that occurs naturally in about 5 to 10% of all coffee cherries. A coffee cherry is like a regular cherry, and inside, normally there are two beans that are side by side, kind of what it looks like when you open up your bag of coffee at home. In a pea berry, there's only one coffee bean. It's smaller and it's rounder, and it was historically discarded as a defect. It was damaged, it was less valuable. But now we actually know that the pea berry grows more consistently, so roasters prefer the pea berry because they know exactly how that coffee will taste. We know that coffee masters prefer the pea berry because it has richer, more concentrated flavors. Um, the most recent pea berry that we offered in our reserve line was described as uniquely spicy and acutely sweet because it is unique, it is an asset. So we are really taking a look at the assets that our partners with disabilities bring to the table. This has been so rewarding for me and for our leadership because we've had the opportunity to finally talk about this openly. And so the stories that I have heard from project manager who has uh, diabetes and every single day 
she monitors and checks her diabetes and this tracking and this monitoring and the meticulous nature that she goes about it makes her the very best project manager there is. If we look at our store managers, such a large population and really the, the, the heart of our company are stores. If I've spoken to a store manager who has a, a type of mental illness and she told me that because of that mental illness, she is able to issue spot, de-escalate, and empathize. Customer service. This is exactly what we're looking for, the transferable skills that we seek in a store manager. So this is the dialogue that's happening internally at Starbucks. And I guess for me personally, um, the storytelling culture has been very important, and I'm sure like many of you in the room, it's difficult to kind of tell your own story, so I'm practicing. But as someone who has muscular dystrophy, when I was a child and my muscles began to weaken, I went from being a, a, an athlete, a sports enthusiast, uh, to focusing on books and academics. I went from being um, someone who drove to someone who um, can navigate the metro bus system in Seattle. I had to adapt. I went from someone being a sports enthusiast to being an attorney. I had to adapt. So my P. Berry premium is adaptability. And in the fast-paced, dynamic business of retail, that's exactly what you need to do. Adapt quickly. So that story, thank you for your patience when I talk about the P. Berry premium. And more importantly, Thank you for my to-do list. Thank you to all of the companies that I've learned from today and th this whole week and has given me even more fire to go back to our leaders and show them exactly what more we can do. And this award is exactly that. It is the, the inspiration to continue the momentum because we have plenty of work to do and I'm excited to join, as Jill mentioned on, on the opening day, I didn't really understand it then, this family that she described, but thank you for being so welcoming and warm as I travel through my own journey. Um, I now know that when we link arms, we can do this. So. On behalf of our partners and Starbucks Coffee Company, thank you. yet another person to inspire me. Thank you, Jessica, and thank you to Starbucks again. Thank you.